Hello, I'm Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder of RackN, and this is a digital rebar training video. In this video, we're going to show how to inject additional Terraform components into your resource broker, basically allowing you to modify and extend the Terraform plans that get built dynamically. And we'll walk you through exactly how this process works so that you can build your own. And you can test this yourself using the samples that I am showing you on Linode. This isn't limited to just Linode. It's a generic functionality that you can use in many ways to extend your systems. For, for this, we're looking at Digital Rebar 4.9 and beyond. The components that I'm going to show you, starting from our resource brokers, allow us to provision resources using pools, contexts, or external APIs. In this case, all of these brokers use Terraform, but it's not limited to Terraform. We could do it in other ways. Uh, it's an abstraction. And what we want to do here is take the system. I've already set it up and gone through the process of provisioning for the cloud and added brokers, but we're going to go ahead and test a broker. Uh, we're going to call it a, uh, just demo, and we're going to call it demo1. And to show you the process, if you haven't seen it, we're going to pick this basic cluster pipeline, just let it start in a normal context, and we're going to pick our Linode broker. So we're going to build a two-node cluster and just show you how that process works. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll pick a special icon to distinguish this cluster. And as the cluster is operating, what you'll see is the cluster has its own pipeline. So this is its automation process. Once it reaches the provisioning step, it is calling out to the broker to do that provisioning. That was what I, I asked it to do. I set the Linode broker. If we jump over to the Linode broker now, you'll see that broker is running a uh, work order. You can see we've done work orders in the past. And if I jump into that work order, you'll see that it's running Terraform. And we can actually see the uh, Terraform output as it's being generated. Here it's building the machines that we asked for. If I jump over to Linode and look at my demo machines, they're actually being built as expected. If I go back to Digital Rebar now, I can watch the machines. We have a new view for this. Uh, and I can watch the machines coming up. Here is the cluster I have, the demo cluster. And in just a moment, when Terraform is done processing the machines, we'll bring up the machines. We have talked about this process in several other videos, and I wanted to briefly touch on it because we are modifying it. So it's very easy to do this. It's worth taking the time to make sure that this process is working correctly for you before you try to modify it. And at this point now, those machines are going to uh, come online, and they'll go through their own workflows. Uh, this heartbeat's really nice because you can watch all of the machines accumulate as the cluster gets built and as there is activity, meaning as they um, actually get initialized and provisioned, we can see exactly what's happening in that operation and get some feedback. Uh, of course, the machines are doing that the same thing right here, and we're going to see them go through that process also. So let's go back to modifying our Linode broker. In this case, the Linode broker is not creating a firewall for the systems. Um, and so what we've done here is we've built a token, an API token for Linode that allows us to include firewalls. That's not necessarily something you would turn on by default. But from a security perspective, it makes a lot of sense to include firewalls in your uh, Linode, your machine configuration. Several of our other cloud providers already do this by default, and we'll walk through how the process goes. For the Linode broker, we're going to look at this. Uh, you'll notice it's locked, so I can't modify it until it's unlocked. Excellent. So now I have read-write control of it. And in the Linode broker, we've, uh, we've done a couple of things. One is this is the pipeline that runs it. And in, when we set up the Linode broker, we created a resource. We used a resource Linode cloud. That's actually where all of the settings to interface and map Terraform come from. Now, you could create your own profile to do this. And in this uh, Terraform plan, we actually have the list of templates that get executed as part of a provisioning operations. Uh, and we have some other uh, videos that walk you through this in much more detail. Um, but in short, we go through initialization. We build a stack script so we can join machines. And then we uh, provision those machines. What we want to do is add in a additional firewall step at the end after the machines have already been built. We can't set up the firewall until after the machines are created. And so in this case, I can't make a change to this. This uh, resource 
is comes from the cloud uh, wrappers templates and I couldn't change it. What I can do is I can go into the broker that I created and I can add in a new parameter for the same thing. So if I go into the Terraform uh, plan templates parameter and add it here, it's going to be added at the top. I now have overridden the one that is coming from that, uh, that, that locked profile. So I have the ability to override any of the values by adding them into the broker itself or adding them into the profile associated with the broker. What I want to do now is I want to add in my firewall. So cloud provision, sorry, uh, yep, Linode firewall. I've already created this. I'll show you where it is at, at, after we've gotten it running once. Uh, TMPL. So this is the name that we chose for this uh, provision firewall uh, template. It's telling me there's something wrong, which is correct. I forgot my comma. Very nice to get some immediate syntax feedback to make sure your, your JSON is, is correct. And I hit save here. Now that I've done that, we will run this additional template automatically when the broker is invoked. Now I don't invoke the broker directly. The way I prefer to do it uh, is I want to let my cluster build do it. So I'm going to add demo2 here, which should include the firewall. And I just have to pick the Linode broker again. Now I could have cloned the whole broker and added a whole new name, Linode Firewall or Firewall Broker. Uh, it, the fact that it's named Linode is, is for us uh, as, we, as we populate these. Uh, in a normal oper production environment, I might call this Team 1, Team 2, you know, Red, Blue, Green, whatever made sense for that East and West if I had brokers for different, different regions. Uh, I'll give it a different icon again and hit save. And we're going through exactly the same process. So here we're, we're going to run through the pipeline, all that, that pre-operational uh, steps for the pipeline. We're at provision. We can jump right to the work order this time instead of drilling in. And this is that work order that's coming up. What you'll see happening here is now, as we built the plan for Terraform to execute, it's going to include the firewall. One of the things that I find really helpful when I'm doing this type of operation, and then this is getting logged so we can come back to it in, in just a moment, is I can also look at the plan itself. And the plans, uh, because we've turned on the Terraform debugging feature, so there's a parameter um, that is I've assigned to the broker that says keep the Terraform plans, it's for debug. Um, if, I, if I do that, then it will actually build the exact Terraform plan that's being executed as a copy. Now, this is not secure, which is why we flagged with red, and we will we'll try to remove this if it's not something you intended to do. Um, but you can actually see all of the components that are in here. And if I jump to the end, what you'll notice is this plan now includes my firewall, Linode firewall cluster demo 2, and then it adds the tags that you would expect us to add. It also picks up the, and it tells you this, uh, the network firewall ports setting. So the ports aren't hard coded into the template. You don't want them to be. They're coming from the parameter we use to set network ports across the board, builds them, and then it also goes back and it builds a Terraform description to include all of the machines in the system. And I'll show you what that template looks like. It looks just a little bit like what I'm showing you, uh, but with a little bit more uh, Golang templating wrapped around it to do this work. But that means that as I add new machines into this cluster, it will automatically include those machines, even if I have a much more complex cluster with different machine types in it. So this has been uh, going through and doing its work. Those machines are now coming online. That's excellent. Uh, and if we jump over to firewalls, this is our cluster demo to firewall. And you'll notice that it included the two machines that we have provisioned. If I went back and asked it to provision additional machines, it would rerun and add those into the template also. So one of the benefits with this, or for example, now if I went back to cluster one and, and asked it to increase the number of machines I have. So let's say I wanted three machines and told it to, uh, it's going to finish this workflow in a second, so I actually want to let it, there it did, it completed it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell it to start reprovisioning again. And in this case, it's going to now uh, do that work for Linode, whoops, do that work for Linode, and 
then add those machines, build a firewall, and add those machines to the firewall because we've updated the Terraform requests. So we should get a new cluster. So this is one of the powers of being able to work through a broker like this is that we have actually set the system up so that everything using that broker improves as you improve the Terraform plans. Now there is, because of Terraform, there's always a risk that you can make a change to something that will then have destructive patterns. So if you wanted to do that, I would suggest adding a new broker and transitioning people to the broker and letting the broker drain. A lot of operational patterns that make that work. Um, but fundamentally, that's it. All you have to be able to do is to find the snippet of Terraform that you want and then include it into the plan list. Uh, and that could include modifying ones that we have out of the box for you or building your whole other ones. And I have a separate video that explains how to build a broker from scratch, a whole new cloud broker starting from a Terraform plan that has absolutely no digital rebar in it at all that just executes the plan. And then we slowly migrate that into one that has more and more automation controls and becomes decomposed. Before I, I end the video, I do want to show you that um, if I was to look at this firewall template, so here's our cloud provision Linode template, I wanna show you what that looks like uh, so that you can get a feel for how the injection works and just how much information we're able to pull out of Digital Rebar to influence creating a Terraform plan. And this is typical for any type we work with another uh, tool or integration. This is a nice example. So here, this is pretty straightforward. We're doing the uh, firewall, but we're pulling in the name of the profile. So we know that, the syst that when we talk to uh, Linode, it's actually getting good names and unique names that match digital reader bar and makes it easy to find. And that's the same thing is true. We're tagging it so that it becomes easy to find as part of a, a group of machines. Then we actually have some logic that says, oh, we could disable all of our um, traffic if we wanted using a standard practice that uh, other things that you consume this parameter uh, will evaluate. And if we don't, then we're going to go through and we're going to drop traffic. We go, we do a range over all these ports and we, because we're using compose parameter, you can actually have multiple allowed ports defined at different levels in the system. So you could define port 22 for SSH in one place and then add in 6443 for Kubernetes later down in the chain and both sets of ports will be picked up because of the way this logic works. This is a significant advantage compared to trying to figure out how to keep all this stuff in a plan itself. You don't have to figure that out. It, we're going to do it in a very natural way. In places where we should be rolling things up, we roll things up. Uh, it builds the the uh, definition from those variables and then um, we'll go back through and this is this short piece of code actually goes to the cluster machines list actually the cluster types and then it builds the correct list for each one of those types um, and so it's it's actually able if you have one of the things that our cluster system can do is you could have leaders and workers you could have uh, storage nodes if you have a mix of t machine types in a cluster this actually makes sure they all get added into the firewall. Now, if you wanted a more complex cluster where you had different firewall rules for different types of machines, you would be creating your own version of this type of configuration. And the same is true if we were doing this for any of the places we do Terraform work. This is uh, the specifics in this example, but it's generically applicable for any time you're building a Terraform plan. And let me go back through and just make sure that we're looking at the right stuff. Uh, here's our extra machines coming in. And let's see, it looks like we did not pick up that firewall yet. That's okay. And all of our machines are ready to roll um, through the system. So we actually now have two clusters running. We've been able to extend their capabilities, actually modify the way Terraform operates. And I wanna give you a very concrete example here. If I was a, a operations team or a platform team supporting development teams, this would allow us as the platform team to continually refine, extend, and improve our Terraform integrations and capabilities without having to disturb or even inform the development team. They would be able to continue using the broker and have uh, confidence that they were gonna get a consistent, repeatable experience without having to own those Terraform plans. And even if they wanted to see what was going on because of the transparency in digital rebar, they can see exactly what was done on their behalf. They can look at the job logs. They can see how things were set up. Um, and they actually can collect a lot of information. So 
as you as you know, as we as we run through these systems, not only do we do inventory, but we're going to pull a whole bunch of cloud information out so we know exactly what's going on, um, and we have a whole bunch of insight into that process, even if we're operating at different levels, which is exactly what the intent is. As a developer and team now, I don't even have to worry about the machines. I can just interact through the cluster and come back into my uh, cluster count. If I wanted to, I could reduce the number of machines, even set it to zero here um, and do that update. Or if I was done with a cluster, I could go back through, uh, switch it back into workflow mode and then clean it up, which will also delete all of the machines and go through that process. So what I'm showing you here is that we have this way to modify Terraform. And one of the benefits is that the people who just want to get machines and run clusters actually don't have to worry about Terraform anymore. And that is actually the real benefit. I hope this was helpful. This is a very easy thing for you to replicate yourself. Uh, we have included this uh, Linode template right in the mix, and you can just replicate the steps in this demo and very quickly go through the process. I will remind you that you need to uh, have a Linode token that allows you to include uh, firewalls. Uh, it just Linode machines does not mean you get uh, firewalls and uh, you might see errors in that uh, very clear errors in the Ter Terraform run telling you that you didn't have permissions and you'll have to tweak your token until you've gotten uh, tokens that include adding firewalls. Very simple process to do. Hope this was helpful and please join us uh, on Slack in the community or ask us questions. We really want to help you uh, be successful with Digital Rebar and your cloud and infrastructure pipeline uh, journey. Thanks.